Sometimes a small change can make a big difference. And Nano, well, it's all about what's small. Let's talk about it. As you might have guessed by the name, the Ananda Nano, well, it has a new driver in it. An extremely thin driver. Though I guess size depends on the dimension, it's still a very tall and very wide driver. So I guess the real question is, does this change matter that much? What does it do? Well, let's start with building comfort and then we'll get into sound. Building comfort wise, well, it's an Ananda. It's got a suspension strap, not really any level of swivel, but it does tilt, dual three and a half millimeter entry. It's pretty light. It does have a little bit of clamp, but overall very comfortable headphone. Actually for me, a little bit more comfortable than things like the Aria Stealth, which speaking of, we will be talking about the Aria Organic sometime soon, but right now this is what I brought back from high-end Munich. If you've felt the build of an Ananda, this isn't anything new. The cable that comes with them is still kind of crappy, but it gets the job done. The pads are nice and soft. Overall, Ananda is built pretty nicely, though I do kind of wish the chassis piece here wasn't plastic. It also comes with a case. I don't want to bore you guys to death with the details. Let's jump into sound. Subjective sound first. We'll talk about frequency response and objective sound after that. This, well, plain and simple, it's a lot like the Meze 109, but a planar. There we go. That's the video. Wrap it up. We're good. You really could boil it down to that. I guess there is more nuance though that we should get into. Overall, it's tuned really well, but in the treble you get a bit of extra air. It leans a little bit brighter in some areas and it might be too much treble for some people. But it also doesn't have the shoutiness that you would sometimes get with Aria or the previous generation, Ananda. In fact, this I actually find to have smoother overall sounding treble than the last generation Ananda. There is absolutely no doubt though that the upper treble can be pretty hot on certain tracks, but also really smooth on others. The best way I can describe that treble is it's very airy and sizzly, but that doesn't mean we're losing out on anything else. The mid range is nice, it's lush, it's full, and the bass doesn't disappoint either. It's textured and it's very, very fast. In a lot of ways, this actually reminds me a lot of how electrostatic headphones sound, but with, well, better tuning. That doesn't go for all E-Stats. Some E-Stats are tuned incredibly, like the Warwick Bravura, for example, which uh, you can check that one out over on headphones.com. We have a video of it too I posted a while back. That's worth checking out too. I'm getting distracted. Soundstage and imaging are both pretty excellent. This doesn't have quite as much soundstage as I was getting on things like the OG Aria, but stage is also bigger than the OG Ananda. Vocal presence is really solid and vocal clarity is also pretty incredible. One of the few planars that I feel like has vocal clarity comparable to things like a Sennheiser, though not quite as good of timbre as you would get on a Sennheiser. It's still pretty good timbre for a planar, though Heifman's always been a little bit weird in that area. For me, the standout of this headphone above everything else it does is its ability to retrieve detail. Now, sometimes that can come with the territory of having an elevated high frequency range, but this feels like it's just genuinely due to a very good technical driver. Detail-wise, I would put this on par with something like my Stax L300, or up in the same ranges as things like the HG800S, though the 800S definitely has better soundstage. In some cases, I feel like this even exceeds the detail capability of the HT800S, but it really depends on where we're talking. This definitely feels faster in the bass, and it definitely feels smoother in the treble, but the 800S does a better job of bringing something like an orchestra to life. Though when you're working with deeper brass and maybe live orchestral instruments like drums, well, the Ananda Nano does a pretty incredible job of that too. I think this will work well for most genres, but I think the absolute best for it is probably people who like electronic music, especially electronic music where you want to hear the grit and articulation of like a sine and a synth, or fast decaying textured bass. If that sounds like it's up your alley, then the Nano is actually a really compelling option. And really, that's my preferred listening case for it. I did try this with a number of amplifiers. My favorite actually was the Questyle M15, using this with a 4.4 millimeter connector. This is a pretty easy to drive headphone. Well, as far as planars and hyphen are concerned, 
so using it on almost any amplifier I had drove it with ease. You could put it on certain OTL tube amps, it would give it a bit of a down tilt and reduce some of the trouble, but with how easy to drive this was, using it on the M15 as a DAC and an amp and a little dongle over Type-C with either my phone or laptop, made for a really convenient way to listen to music on the couch, in my hammock, or just when I'm taking a break here at the office. Now again, it's not all joy and roses and happiness. That trouble might be too much for some people. And at times it was also too much for me. I could also do with a bit more swivel on these cups. When I put it on my head, I definitely get a little bit more back pressure than I do front, and that's even when I'm wearing glasses. But now that we've covered most of that, let's talk about frequency response and objective sound with this headphone. This was measured on the Brulin Care 4128. The target is in gray. It's diffuse field with a 10 decibel downward slope. We've done some videos talking about this in the past. If you want to learn more, you can check out the link in the video description. The blue line is several average takes of the Ananda Nano. You can see it's actually really targeted here and through the bass and mid-range. We see a little bit of elevation in the low frequencies. It carries up through the mid-range with only a little bit of the classic Heifman scoop. You usually see more of a recess between 1 and 2 kilohertz. This is a bit more adherent than that. Nice peak up there around 2.7k where it should with our natural ear gain, but then above that we see a bit more elevated treble than you would want. Now this is definitely why it sounds a bit more sizzly and a bit more airy. Again, this treble might be a bit too much for some people, but it's also nowhere near as exaggerated as things like the DT990 Pro. And actually, I would say that it's a bit more in line, if not slightly less treble than you get on things like the Sennheiser HD800S. So while it is a bit more treble than neutral, it's also not crazy. Okay, frequency response out of the way, let's talk conclusions. The Ananda Nano is really, really fast. It's really, really detailed, but it also has more treble than you might perceive as neutral. That airy quality can make for some really, really good combinations depending on the music you listen to, but it can also sound bright at times. And if you're a person that gets very easily fatigued from listening to anything with elevated high frequency, well, there's another thing to watch out for still nowhere near as much treble as you would get with peaky monsters like the DT990, thank god, but it is still enough treble that it's worth mentioning. If you like electronic music, care a lot about vocal clarity, detail, stage, or the texture of your music, well, the Ananda Nano is an absolute beast for that. It's very much like a planar alternative to things like the Meze 109, and I think this headphone is going to be a little bit slept on this year. There's a lot of people that this is probably exactly what they need, but they might not know that it exists. If you're one of those people, hopefully you're watching this video. But another one to consider too will be the Aria Organic. Check that out at High End Munich, and that was definitely one of the highlights from the show. We'll have a video coming on that some point in the relatively near future. But I've also got another interesting surprise for you in the coming weeks. I don't know if I can say what headphone that's going to be a review of, but... I can at least say that it costs more than my car, and that mystery headphone is made in Ireland. Leave a comment down below if you know what headphone I'm reviewing next. But other than that, let's wrap this video up, guys. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. Comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can have the forums or Discord, both available at the link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until next time, guys. Peace.